Welcome to episode 10 of Career Growth Made Easy. I'm your host, Craig Ansell, and today's episode is Are You Standing Out? Now, I ask you that because it could be, are you standing out for the right reasons or the wrong ones? It's a new year. Is it going to be the same old deal for you? Same old job, same old role? Maybe no considerations for career or job advancement and just punch the time clock, so to speak? Or is this the year for change? You could grow personally, emotionally, potentially spiritually, maybe even physically. Learn some new trades, some new skills. When I talked about standing out for the right reason or the wrong one, there's also another consideration, status quo. Just going to do the minimum, keep your head down, keep your head level. Nobody sees you. Nobody notices you. Continue to collect that paycheck. In episode eight, we talked about toxic people. Toxic people, for example, can be those that constantly complain, whether they're colleagues or if you see somebody in a you know social setting or at a restaurant, there's always something wrong, always a problem no matter what. Even in the most ideal and seemingly perfect conditions, they'll find something negative. Well, kind of want to challenge you this year because I'm challenging myself as well about growth. How much of the world do we see as negative? How are we using our eyes as filters? With episode eight, Toxic People, we touched on those, and you're welcome to go back to that episode and listen to it. I recommend it. The concern I have is, are you or I possibly a toxic person? Do we have a toxic person mode or switch that flips and we stay negative for a long period of time? There's things we can do about that and things we should do to kind of self-check, right? In episode three, we talked about being overloaded by emails and text, especially work emails. That seemed to be a big hit as I got some feedback from some listeners on that. It resounded with them. Why am I talking about the overload? Because it can wear us down and it can drain us. And then we possibly could be standing out for the wrong reasons. Here at Career Growth Made Easy and CraigAnsell.com, we're all about growth, personal growth and professional growth. If you've listened for some time, you've know that. But to determine how we go about growth, we need to know where we're starting out. So where are you with your growth journey? For the future, you need to create a SMART target. Do you remember what SMART stands for? We went over that in a past episode, but I'll remind you. SMART is an acronym out there and it's used a lot in coaching and growth. Specific, measurable, the A is achievable or attainable, realistic, and time-based. We need to set some goals out there, set some targets. If we don't, like the late Zig Ziglar, a motivational speaker, once said, if you aim at nothing... You'll hit it every time. What am I talking about? If we don't have a plan, if we don't have a goal, if we don't have a target, we're not likely to change. We're just going to be that status quo that keep your head down and maybe nobody will notice you. The problem is when it comes time for promotions, pay increases, that challenging special job that might really push you beyond your limits in a healthy way and get you growing or just challenge you in new ways and find new experiences you might uh, fall in love with and it might change your job uh, job description or your job plan, maybe enter into a new career path, we're not going to find it if it's keep your head down and status quo. There's lots of tools and tips out there. We talked about episode two, resumes. Now, no, I'm not asking you to go back and redo your resume this time, although you already should have. And that episode had some killer tips and an awesome download for free to help boost your resume. What I talked about also that got into detail was about your work performance and just do a self-awareness check, kind of a self-collection of what you did in the last year. If you're not reviewing what you've done for your job or for your career and keeping a log so that you can kind of see where you've been and maybe set a way, set a target to where you're going, 
You need to start that immediately. Episode two will not only help you clean up your resume and make sure it's up for 2020, but it also will give you some really great views and simple tools for data collection so that you log your performance over your past six months or year, for example. In episode six, it was titled Say Yes Less. Why do I bring it up? Because in that episode, I shared some difficult to discuss points that I was in overwork mode years ago. And what message did I send out? You likely read a slumped over, haunched over body, frustrated, red face many of the days of the week. And I was probably short-tempered and short-spoken to many, despite the fact that I had the absolute best intentions to give my highest level of service to my upstream and downstream customers. I needed to work smarter and not harder. I gave all that effort with little to no return, little to no reward. Looking at things differently, if you're a new employee, your work job description might just explain exactly what you need to do to satisfy your customers and your management. If you perform those job description tasks well, you potentially could be seen as an up-and-comer and being seen and being noticed for the right reasons. Those that have been in mid- or longer-term positions several years or greater, we might have forgotten what our original job description was anyway, or our job description or title may have changed or morphed over the years. So what happens then? Well, we might be doing tasks and activities we never planned or never dreamed of doing, and we have so much on our plates possibly that we don't even realize what we're trying to perform, what we're trying to provide as output or content to our customers. One thing I'd suggest if that's the case is circle back to see who you work for. What is your product or service that you're supposed to be providing? What is your output, right? Once you have that thought up, you could potentially have a special conversation with both your upstream and downstream customers. In some cases, depending what you do out there, you literally would be speaking to your end customers, the ones that you feel you have a good relationship with, with the ones that are you know, buying your product or service and paying you, keeping you in business and keeping money in your wallet. In other cases, say you work in a large office settings, People hand you off work, whether it's um, peers in other groups or colleagues, or if it's your manager that brings a pile of work by and says, hey, process these in and process these out. You're in, you're receiving from others, and the out, you're providing output to others. I always look at it as everyone in a company is my customer, everyone within our business and the final customer. So if you keep a good customer-focused hat on and you treat everyone positively and with a smile and a true genuine heart that you want to help, I think that will help you get noticed for the right reasons. If you've had a recent performance review, what was measured on it? Did you have any metrics, any special deliverables or items that you were supposed to provide and didn't? Maybe you had a particular metric or deliverable that you did so-so on. You got an average rating, but felt, hey, that's below what I expected because I really worked hard. Working hard and working smart is not necessarily the same thing. So regarding metrics and deliverables, okay, there's quantity, there's quality, creativity, customer satisfaction, throughput, That's just a fancy word for rate. How much work product are you performing over a period of time? And then I ask you, do metrics really matter? Do they really affect good or do they really affect great customer service? Potentially, you could rethink what your metrics are for your job role. And if you have a good relationship with your supervisor or manager, you could really do some brainstorming, sit down with them and have a a special respectful conversation about how you might want to recommend changing your job role or job description so that you can provide higher quality work product or work services to your customers internal to your network. On the other hand, if you self-evaluate and you find or feel you might be standing out for the wrong reasons, what could you do? Well, like I said earlier, you need to start with knowing where you are. 
If you have any historical data, such as performance reviews from the last six months or year or two, and notice any trends on those performance reviews, or if you just want to go back and say, hey, I remember last week, last month, the following positive or negative things happened, or there's areas I could improve, start there. At least you have something to work with. That will lead you to building a plan. And like we said earlier, that plan should have a target with SMART goals, something specific and measurable. You could potentially solicit feedback from others, such as your peers. And I said earlier about customers, you have upstream and downstream customers. Potentially, you could talk to your management, again, if you have a good relationship with them and provided it's done in a focused, respectful manner. And then you could potentially recommend, after self-evaluation, you would seek training on specialized, focused areas. We talked earlier in a prior episode, I think it was nine, about hard and soft skills. The hard skills are more of your book-based skills, and your soft skills are more of your communication or human interaction skills. Sometimes we're really book smart on the hard skill side, but our soft skills could really use some polishing, especially if we've been in a position for a while and we get a little bit... Um, a little bit comfortable, maybe a little bit worn out from doing the same thing, and we don't really get challenged anymore, kind of just on uh, auto-repeat, if you will. So go ahead and take some time to self-evaluate, and remember the title of this podcast when you're doing it. Are you standing out for the right reasons or the wrong ones? That's my challenge to you this week. This has been Craig Ansell. Our website is craigansell.com, and our podcast is Career Growth Made Easy. We're happy you're here with us in the new year 2020, and we're glad that we help you turn problems into potential and issues into opportunities. Please check our show notes, like our show if you're getting some value, some information out of it, and even if it just gets you thinking, gets you motivated, gets you moving forward on a growth journey for your job, your career, your life, send us some feedback. Email is info at craigansell.com or visit our website and you can click a contact form. And don't forget the show notes because we have the freebie in there that's got a double bonus. First, it's several pages for your resume tune-up kit. It's got the latest trends on how to improve the most common mistakes out there, got some bonus content, and there is a special link inside that download that will get you a free download to ATS, Applicant Tracking System Guide. We give you the pro tips of what those tracking systems look for, the most common reasons that re uploaded resumes on the internet get disqualified or fail, and how to fix them. Wishing you an awesome new year. Peace, God bless, and we'll talk next week. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.